Good morning and welcome to Child for the Week Assembly. I'm going to talk a little bit about butterflies and caterpillars today and how they help us to understand problem solving. But before we do so, let's use our liturgy to start our assembly. In the beginning, when God created all things, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Let your light shine. God is light and in him there is no darkness. Let your light shine. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let your light shine. So the story of the butterfly. I've got some lovely pictures of different butterflies uh, that you might see around in this country. Though some of them might be from, from different countries, but certainly they are beautiful. And they make me happy when I see a butterfly. Remember, we talked a little bit about what makes us happy last week with my assembly, Happy New Year. We talked about things that um, happen to us that, that in a sense dictate whether we're going to be happy. And also those people who are happy just because inside they choose to be happy well we're thinking a little bit about uh, what happens when problems come our way today and uh, how we might choose to deal with those are problems good or bad and i wonder if we can learn from them you may have heard this phrase uh, whether you're a, a person who sees a glass as half empty or a person who sees a glass as half full. Here we've got a half full glass with the person with a positive uh, look about them. Whereas this person sees that actually his glass is half empty and uh, he's not so happy about that. So we can think a little bit about problems that happen to us at school or at home they can be opportunities for us to improve. Depends on our attitude. Let me think a little bit about how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly today. And I want to tell you a story, but first of all, I thought we'd look at a very short video to show exactly how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, because it may be that you haven't seen uh, this happen, and, uh, and it helps us to understand. So here goes.
Well, I wonder what you thought of that. It's a fascinating um, process, isn't it? The way that um, a caterpillar uh, forms that chrysalis and then uh, breaks free to become a butterfly. Let me tell you a story then about this. There was once a wildlife photographer. His job was to capture the change that a caterpillar would undergo in becoming a butterfly. And he found a caterpillar that was happily munching on some leaves. As he watched, the caterpillar stopped eating and took itself away from the food and attached itself to the underside of a small branch. It hung there and then it began to shed its skin. And emerging from underneath, the photographer could see the chrysalis. He watched it every day, but it remained unchanged for about two weeks. Finally, she saw movement and the chrysalis began to break apart. A small slit had appeared and she was able to get some amazing photographs as the butterfly started to break free. But the butterfly soon became exhausted as it struggled and it pushed to break free of that prison that it had got itself in. The photographer couldn't watch the poor butterfly struggle any longer, so got out a pocket knife and she cut open the chrysalis. The butterfly emerged. The photographer waited with her camera to see the butterfly open its wings. But the butterfly just stood with its wings folded. It couldn't fly. The photographer soon realised what had happened. By forcing open the chrysalis, the butterfly was strengthening its wings so that it could fly. But in helping the butterfly to break free, the photographer had ruined any chance for that butterfly to fly. It just wasn't going to happen. It's a popular story, this, and there are a couple of things that we can learn from it. I want to share those with you now. So during that struggle of the butterfly getting out of its chrysalis, it was strengthening its wings so that it could do what it was designed to do. It was exactly what was needed. Sometimes we have problems at school or at home and they're a struggle. Maybe we see them as too difficult if we have that view of being half empty, a glass half empty. But if you have that view of it being a glass half full, then you might see that problem as an opportunity to get better. Imagine what would happen if a baby wanted to walk and after a couple of goes at trying, it said, well, it's just too hard, I'm going to give up. By practicing, the baby is developing its strengths and ultimately it can begin to walk. Firstly, it has to balance and it falls over lots of times, but ultimately it's able to walk. It's learned a new skill. Unlikely that we could do it straight away, but inevitably it comes with practice. We may all struggle when we're learning a new skill at school. Uh, maybe our spellings or our times tables or something in maths. If we see those as a struggle that helps us to improve, then maybe that's a useful way of understanding why we go through them. We may even have struggles with friends or with family. And we have to learn how to, uh, what to say and what to do so that we don't make things worse. We can learn from those struggles too, about the words that we should use and what words hurt other people's feelings. So that's one thing that we can learn from the story. The story uh, shows us that struggles give us an opportunity to improve. But what else do they show us?
He said that learning skills is hard. It's good for having uh, people who can help us with those skills, but we don't want them to do it for us. Imagine if the mother of a baby boy who is learning to walk picked him up every time he tried. Every time he, he tried to stand up, she'd pick him up instead. After a while, the baby would take a lot longer to learn to walk and the mother might be thinking she's helping, but actually she's not. She's stopping the baby from getting stronger in its legs. In the story of the photographer, he thought or she thought they were helping, but actually they were making things worse. When I'm learning a new skill, it's important that I know that I will benefit from practicing it. It's good to have the help of my LSA or other friends. Uh, but if you always could ask the teacher for the answer or copy somebody else's spellings in a test, you'd never learn yourself. If your mum or your dad always did your homework, you might get a good mark, but you'd never master the skill that was helping you to practice. It's really important. So the story of the butterfly is a reminder that we will all go through struggles. At school, we'll struggle with our learning, in our friendships, but that's okay. It's good to know that everyone goes through similar struggles. And it's good to know that often those struggles are actually helping us to make us better. I wonder how that butterfly made you feel, that story. Do learning new skills feel like a real struggle to you? Do you struggle in your friendships sometimes? I wonder what school skill you need to practice to get, uh, make sure you improve? Or what friendship skills do you need to practice? Do you need to learn to listen more or to be more kind? Let's say a prayer together. And if you want to agree with me, you can say Amen at the end. Dear God, we're thankful for stories that make us think about important lessons that can help us in our lives. Help us to remember that struggles we face often help us to master new skills or to develop better friendships. Help us to persevere to see our struggles through to completion. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, we've got our Child of the Week Assembly uh, celebrations, and we've also got our uh, house points to give out. So this week, let's see what's happening. Anning House had 377. Parks House, 413. Wiltshire House had 440. And Bernardo's is the winner this week with 451. I know Mr. Lyon is going to keep a running total so we can let uh, people know who's won overall at the end of the term. Well done to you all. And so now we move on to our Child of the Week celebration. So, in year one, Miss Berman wants to say a big well done to Sophia. And Miss Marsden has chosen Georgia as her child of the week. A big well done to Bella in year two, Miss Franklin's class, and Tyrese in uh, Miss Jake's and Mrs Walker's class. The whole of year three, A, has been chosen by Mrs Epps and Miss Poole. Well done to all of you. You've had uh, quite a disruptive week last week and you've done brilliantly, so well done. 
and Miss Crofts has chosen Teddy. In year four, Miss Lefebvre has chosen Hannah and Elise is the child of the week for Mr. Wright. In year five, uh, Mrs. Adonu chose Serenity uh, just before Christmas, I think. Um, so uh, that's one that's outstanding. So Serenity, well done. And uh, Mr. Boyer has chosen uh, Lexi Rose. And finally, in year six, big well done to Eternity Love in Mr. Uh, Miss Greenhill's class and to Freya in Miss Denial's class. So big well done to everybody who has been chosen as Child of the Week this week, our first week back. Wonder if you can think, just as we go into this next week ahead, of uh, ways that you might improve, skills that you might practice, and an attitude that is positive, that sees these not as problems that will get you down, but uh, a problem just like that butterfly had, trying to get out of its chrysalis, something that uh, will enable you to improve and maybe do things that you'd never expected. I hope you have a good week and you have some good problem solving. Take care and I shall see you around. So go in the light and the peace of Jesus in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>